around to get another arrest before they go back in to try and see what they can rescue individuals, to try and protect properties, to try and give advice, to try and do whatever they possibly could in order to try and rescue any individual that might be still around that, and that does work. So if you think to yourself, could that happen here in, in this city? The answer is probably not. The way that we've undertaken to date, as the Chief Fire Officer, Deputy Chief Fire Officer has explained, has been swift and it gives reassurance not only to those tenants that are the most high life jobs, but also to the housing providers. In a way, closely with our building control officers, it goes to show when you work in a collaborative manner for things that you can get done and you can get done quickly. And we hope that the lessons that we learned from this awful tragedy would be one of those turning points in the history of fire safety. There was a fire many years ago, the Henderson's fire, what shook the, 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 the legislation of the fire safety world and created new legislation. Certain individuals in the fire service and outside have always been saying that this country, that, that England, should actually adopt uh, sprinkler systems when uh, high-rise properties, within care homes, within schools, where there are vulnerable people who reside in order to protect those individuals. And that's what this should be about. But being a politician, you know, anywhere in this country, being a senior politician, being a minister, where you can actually influence change, when you get something like this, to sit back and ignore it is absolutely unbelievable. And the service the sector through the National Fire Chiefs Council and National Fire Sprinklers Association have consistently said to the students about the need to change legislation, and yet they've ignored it time and time again. Where if they were to listen to the professionals at that time and install sprinkler systems in that in Redford Towers, then as I say, those people who still <coughs> are today are we going to be discussing this. So as part of the agenda, which I hope we've got the full support of the council, I hope that those strong demands go to this government. And you listen. Let's not have shallow words. Let's have actions. Let's not ensure that these people have died in vain. Let's change it for the betterment of people who live in tower blocks and other buildings and make sure that they feel safe in their home. Thank you, Councillor Manuel. Can I have Councillor Court?
So if you then look at Grenfell Tower, um, my sister-in-law's family were caught up in that. They survived, just. Um, they got out, completely traumatised, um, from that little community, looking out for each other again in that little community. If that had been Liverpool, we would have got money to those guys within 24 hours because our system support scheme turns stuff around so quickly. So what I'm saying is really that the bottom line is that residents in those blocks have got to be listened to, including the vulnerable elderly, including the kids, so that they're listened to and their wisdom gets taken into account so that when we move forward, we move forward together based on wisdom and understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gordon, especially for, for keeping to the time. And um, I think at this time we shouldn't accept any um, additional time on, on speeches. Please try and keep within your, your allotted time. Um, we're already off the time for the debate, but as I say, it's well worth getting this uh, spoken through and thought through by this, this council. But just so you bear in mind, try and keep within the time. Uh, I'm um, called Councillor Helen Thompson.
Compulsory private landlord licensing is a way to ensure that landlords meet acceptable standards of safety and basic residential unity. It may even be a way to start putting the <coughs> radical idea of a house or flat as primarily someone's home back at the top of the agenda. For these reasons and those um, outlined by other speakers, I'll be supporting this motion. Thank you.